In this video, we're going to define the flux of a vector field by the using the following physical example. Suppose we want to calculate the amount of fluid flowing through a surface S that's enclosing some volume V. So you can think of a piece of material that uh, we're interested in knowing how much liquid is leaving that volume of material through the enclosing surface S. The rate of fluid fluid flowing per unit area, which we're going to denote by capital V, is a vector field. So I'm going to consider a general volume, such as this one, which will denote volume with this V to differentiate it from this vector field. And this is enclosed by some area S. And we're initially going to consider the fluid flow through a small piece of area that we're going to call DS. And what I want you to consider now is suppose that at this point of the volume, the fluid is coming out in this direction. This vector has components along this area element where one of them is flowing directly out of the area element and the other one is along the surface. So no liquid is flowing along this component. So we need a way to only take the component that actually measures how much fluid is leaving this area and to ignore the component which indicates fluid not leaving this area. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to associate to every surface element ds and this bigger area a normal vector n which when uh, from which we can take the dot product with this vector field and that will only give us the component of, in this case, the rate of fluid flowing uh, outside of the area and throwing away the component for which there is no fluid flowing outside of the area. So this means that if capital V denoted the rate of flow per unit area, then if we now consider an area, so the rate of flow coming through the S, this is a rate of flow per unit area. We're only interested in the component that is perpendicular to the area because that's what's measuring the stuff that's actually coming out times our area element ds. Now as you can break up the surface into lots of these, measure the rate of flow for each one of these ds's and sum up all of the contributions. So if, if we add up all the contributions from all of the area elements um, the uh, make up the total surface S. Then the total rate of flow through the entire surface S is going to be, so remember you're adding up all of these contributions. So you have to integrate and you have to do a double integral because it's over an area. 
So you're adding up all of the contributions of the rate of flow through each area element over your entire surface. And this is equivalent to something that's often called the flux of a quantity. And this integral is known as a surface integral. So we usually use surface integrals to measure the flux of something going through a particular area. So you might be familiar from electromagnetism of the flux of uh, an electric field. This can also be the flux of some amount of liquid, the flux of heat leaving some surface, etc. So it's a commonly occurring quantity in uh, physics and engineering. Now, we're often interested in the rate of flow or the flux through a particular surface that's enclosing an infinitesimally small volume. Often, We're going to call this infinitesimally small volume delta tau. And this quantity is what we're going to define as something called the divergence of the vector field. So it's defined divergence of a vector field V. This is equal to strictly speaking it's the limit as this volume shrinks down to zero and you have the surface integral. And now we're gonna put this little loop around the integrals to indicate that we're integrating over the entire surface that's enclosing the volume. So this total rate of flow will give you, for example, over one face. If you wanna do it over an entire sphere, for example, then you would also indicate that by closing a loop in the integrals. So without the loop, it's over a single face of your volume. With the, with the circle around the integrals, it's over the entire surface and closing the volume. And we'll do an example of that uh, in a later video. So in the next video, I wanna go through how you will practically calculate the divergence of a vector field instead of having to calculate it over an integral, I forgot that this is divided by your uh, small volume. Okay, so the divergence is the flux over your entire enclosed surface divided by the volume enclosed by that surface.